Quack Quiz. Proudly brought to you by Discam. Pharmacists do care. Some people just have to look at each other and they're pregnant. But for the rest of us, there are certain do's and don'ts when trying to conceive. Of course, there is a lot that is out of our control and we can thank our hormones for that. But there is a lot we can do to keep our fertility tanks as full as possible. Possible. In the studio right now, I've got Rosie Matene with me. Her tanks are always full, no matter what's going on. I mean, an actress and an activist. That's probably the, the part I like about you the most. I love about you as an activist, yeah. Rosie. <laughs> what are you activisting about at the moment? What's sure, your a lot of things. <laughs> but mainly, my main passion is, is to combat woman abuse and child abuse. Okay. I've been with Power, People Opposing Women, for over a decade now, and I'm now a vice chairperson. Um, and, you know, campaigning not only just in South Africa, but across the continent. Uh, two years ago, I climbed Kilimanjaro for the Africa Unite wow. campaign. Um, yeah, it's just something that's very, very close to my heart. And I just think a lot of societies and governments haven't really taken the seriousness of it and, and what it actually does to society and how it can be combated if you all just galvanize that it's not just a woman's issue. Yeah. So, yeah, so they call me an actorvist. An actor? <laughs> I like that. Very yeah. nice. But you said something earlier which struck me. You said, I'm going to be pregnant this time next year. Yeah. Now, there's a couple of things behind that. One, partner is needed first. Okay, let's park that. Okay, we don't have that tick yet, but, but we're speaking to God about that one. Good, good. He, he's coming. I'm sure he's going to be put in place. Okay. But also, I'm getting to the, the age group, and, and also, I've just gone through a whole personal journey where now I'm ready to, to bring a baby into the world and to, to give it all I got. That's wonderful. And yet, there is some fertility issue there because there were cysts, there's endometriosis. There's a couple of things. Tell yeah. us a bit about that. A couple of years ago, I had cysts on my own. Ovaries and my doctor, the first thing he said to me, he goes, well, you've got the career woman's disease. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> um, but fortunately, we had them removed. Um, I do suffer from endometriosis, which I have to contain and look at all the time. And I, and I do my, my regular checkups every four to six months or so. And thank goodness, all is, all is well and I'm healthy and I eat healthy, I exercise. And it's, let's hope for that we can make a little rosy soup. And the pitter patter <laughs> of little feet next yes. year. Well, given what you just told me, uh, I hope you're doing the quack quiz at home because you're about to lose against Rosie Matera. She knows more about any of us, <laughs> more about, <clears throat> about any about of us that. right now. So, so let's check it out. Ten questions. You know how this works, Rosie. Yes. Are you ready for this? The I am quack indeed. The quiz starts now. All right. First question true or false? Your most fertile days can vary from month to month. True or false? True. Absolutely. You sound very confident when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're most fertile around one to two days before you ovulate. Uh, that's when your ovary releases an egg. But when you ovulate, ovulate is obviously special to you. First question, bang on the nail. Re new research has found that doing which of these increases ovulation frequency? Eating a big breakfast or eating a big dinner? I would say breakfast because it prepares you for the day. <laughs> <laughs> not for that reason, but yes, you're right. Yeah, believe it or not. I mean, it's fascinating. Uh, an increased caloric intake at breakfast can lead to lower levels of testosterone. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Not actually. Increased frequency. So okay. there is science behind that. Hmm. What can commonly hold up ovulation? Stress and a change in routine, or exposure to extreme weather? Hmm. Exposure to extreme weather? <laughs> really? Yeah! <laughs> you know, flying into different temperatures. <laughs> I suppose to a degree it could, but you know, but stress and, and change in routine that makes is actually sense, what yeah. does that affect hormones. You know, anything that affects hormones affects ovulation. Women who are trying to conceive should boost their intake of what? Potassium or folic acid? Folic acid. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. And the reason is, folic acid helps protect your unborn baby from developing neural tube and birth defects. And you should start taking folic acid, listen to this, Rosie, at least one to two months before falling pregnant to maximize those protective benefits. So you could start tomorrow, really. So September, October. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, men should eat more of what to improve sperm quality and quantity? Strange question to ask. Yellow, orange, and red fruit and veg? Or whole grains? What improves? Hmm, the whole grains? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you get a partner, you'll know to feed him veggies. Because <laughs> yes. it's the good, it's the orange, the green, the yellow, all those kind of fruits that really increase uh, spermatility. Okay. Fascinating. Yeah. Mm. What kind of dairy has been found to improve fertility? Trick questions. Low fat dairy or full fat dairy? Which one improves fertility? 
It's probably the one that tastes the worst, so it's probably low fat. <laughs> it's the other way around. Yeah. Oh, good, so I can eat full, I can eat the yummy full stuff. Fat. Yes, you can, which is great. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. In fact, there was some, as much as an 85% lower likelihood of uh, falling pregnant on a low fat yoga diet. Wow. Can't believe it, huh? mm. Body weight is an important factor determining fertility. Is it relevant to women only or men and women? To men and women. Yeah, yeah. you're so right. Yeah. So pick your hubby yeah. wisely. <laughs> We're looking at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> Which of these lifestyle habits can lower your fertility? Prolonged sitting or smoking? Ah, smoking. Yeah, in fact, smokers, by the way, may have up to a 40% lower fertility rate. Isn't wow. that amazing? So you're doing all the right things. Two more questions. How long should you wait after stopping the pull before trying to conceive? As you take the final pull of the month or three months after stopping? It will probably be up to three months. It's actually not. Really? <gasps> There's no reason to wait. You can start trying to fall pregnant as soon oh, as wow. you stop the pull. Rosie, last question. Doing which of these? Final question. Doing which of these can increase your chances of falling pregnant? Getting sufficient sleep or getting a cat? <laughs> Considering I hate cats, <laughs> please make me the sleep. <laughs> that makes two of us. Oh, yeah. cats, man. It's true, sleep. In fact, getting sufficient sleep uh, is the answer. If you aren't getting enough sleep every night, no amount of catch-up snooze time can make up for lost rest. Research shows that the hormone leptin, which has a critical role in female fertility, is reduced when your body is sleep-deprived. Wow. So, uh, there you go. Lots of sleep, lots of folic acid. And a lots good of yummy man. dairy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> And you could be on your way to a little baby Rosie. We'll, we'll, we'll see you this time next year. I look forward <laughs> to that. And I look forward to following your career, Rosie. Can't Thank wait you. to see what else you're up to and what you're kind of making headway on. Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me onto the show. Yeah. If you've got any unanswered questions, you're welcome to quiz our doctors right now. Go to the webpage or get the Hello Doctor app. Click on the TV show and fire away. They're on call just for you. The Quack Quiz. Proudly brought to you by Discam. Pharmacist to care.